It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. My rudder is covered in eco film. I'm using all Stewart systems on all my fabric parts. And I did two layers of fabric bonded together like sheets of plywood glued together. So everything is hidden. The tape is, is buried underneath or between two full sheet layers. And man, it is turning out so good. Anyway, this is the first coat of Ecofill. Then I'm gonna put Eco Prime on it. I already did another part where I got to the Eco Prime and then went to the sanding phase where we did light sand on it. And it sands so easy and so nice. I've just, I've done a lot of different kinds of paints and I'm telling you, it's such an easy system. Uh, doesn't have all the chemicals, so I, I'm absolutely in love with it. And for the first time using all Stewart's, start to finish, and from the fabrics to the paint, I couldn't be happier. So I've got these done. I got, uh, I'm gonna pull them out of here in about an hour, do a little light sand on it, and grab, bring in some other parts, throw some more color on it. It's going fast. <laughs> We, uh, we're doing paint and build at the same time, but it uh, won't be nice as when I get to the end of the project. I'll just be doing like the cowling and the whole back of the plane will already be done. So I'm pretty pumped. <laughs> it's turning out awesome. Let's get back to work. Oh my gosh, it's a big day. There's, I don't know, about a dozen parts in here. There's another dozens more out there, but these are the ones that get the high gloss clear with UV in it. Um, I've had a lot of people ask how I did some of the high polish clear on top of a carbon that wasn't done a more conventional way, which would be a plug of a mold, gel coat clear, and then embed the wet carbon into that, or it could be infused or um, pre-preg uh, into a clear coated gel, which pops off a part that's absolutely already perfect and really nice, maybe needs a little cut and buff. This is the opposite. I actually put the carbon on the outside of the mold and then you have to sand and finish. So how do you get a good finish? It's a pain in the butt. <laughs> but I'll tell you how I did it. You can see all these layers here. So first of all, you have to realize that because your layers are all overlapping, when you sand, you're gonna end up cutting some carbon, which makes that layer of carbon not worthless, but the structural integrity is gone. You've cut the strands of the carbon, which gives it the strength. The strength you still may have if you've grazed a couple of layers is the thickness, and the, the bendability, but as far as an actual structural load, history. So it's, you never want to cut a strand on a spar or anything else. I don't want that on this either. So I actually had to add additional layers of carbon fiber, knowing that when I did body work, rather than adding filler and sanding back down and not touching the carbon, I didn't want all that weight. I added extra carbon so I could sand a sacrificial layer and I never got through really a, 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 the sacrificial layers. I just grazed them here and there. Then once you get the bodywork kind of knocked down, you get pinholes all over it. So any of you have tried to do carbon, you're shaking your head, it's like a bad day. So the pinholes are all over the place between the carbon fiber weed. And the way I get rid of that, rather than layering a whole bunch of layers of clear and then trying to sand it down and get those pinholes to fill in. I actually get most of the sanding done and I've done all these steps. But then I take the resin, two-part resin that makes the carbon fiber and I spread it on it like a with a spreader, like a like a thick body filler. And then I put the peel ply on it to hold it from running. And I layer the entire carbon fiber part and it's a it is such a big job. 
And then you go through and block it down, and then there's still a few more pinholes, and you do it again, and you block it down. So what ends up happening, normally you use a lightweight spray-on filler. Super easy, it's like Christmas, when you get to do that after you've played with carbon, trying to keep it clear. The lightweight spray-on filler, you just sand down, but you can't use that because it's got a color and you'll hide the carbon. So if I want a clear carbon, I actually have to use carbon resin to build out and sand back. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it does, but basically, clear carbon resin, sand it down. If I found a little low spot after I did the whole plane, I'd find a little patch, put a little more resin, put a piece of pill ply, pull it off and act, use it as a body filler with clear resin. So that when I was done and we shoot it, which we're about to do right now, with the actual clear, I've actually filled any lows and valleys with actual carbon fiber resin rather than building up thick paint, which won't adhere quite as well as the pure resin does. So let's mix up some clear, spray these. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Let's get to work. All right, guys, I wanted to say thanks for all of you who like to double check. I have a rule here in my shop. Uh, if anyone comes over to help, it doesn't matter how good or bad the question is, they're always allowed or expected to double check me and me, them, it's a good thing. So I wanted to bring one up. It was a perfect opportunity to show you what I'm talking about. I love everybody's thoughts. Here's one. A while back, I made a video about these cables coming down the aircraft and the cable was rubbing a bar right here just so slightly touching it and a lot of people say hey you can't have that cable touch the bar you're very observant and you're 100 percent correct you can what i didn't show or describe in the video is i didn't have these bushings installed yet why because i hadn't painted the plane yet so now the bushings are in you can come in zoom in close i wanted to show the culprit area there's that bushing <laughs> if you come in, open up the side, this was the bar that it was touching. So I got a quarter inch clearance all the way down, all the way in. Thanks for the double check. Now that the bushings are in, we have nothing to worry about. Let's get back to work. Okay, so <laughs> this is my favorite part. I'm just peeling off to an orange stripe, but I'm at the tail end of like seven different times I've sprayed this between the white base coats, the several multiple layers of clear coat to get the raw clear carbon fiber perfect without any pinholes, the silver, the black, matte black. Um, it has been, and then clear. So I'm down to orange. Then a sand again, and then clear over the entire thing and it will be done. So this is a lot of layers, a lot of steps, and a lot of masking, but we'll just start peeling off. Yeah. 
Oh, there's something extra satisfying about doing that. Okay, picking out the little, <laughs> the P and the A is gonna be a little tight, but we'll get it. So we'll peel the rest of this off. Awesome! Oh my gosh, <laughs> when I get clear on this, it's gonna be crazy, because this raw carbon is gonna come to life. So, oh my gosh, it's been a lot of work. <laughs> Bit more to go, so. You know the drill. Okay guys, I'm really excited to do this project I'm tackling right now. This is a big project. Brings me back to grade school when I pull out a pair of scissors and I cut out little stickers. Cause I'm about to cut out 10 pages of stickers. Let me tell you what this is. So I was thinking about how to finish the paint job on Scrappy. Right now, you have to excuse the fact that I don't have the clear coat on it, so it's a little unfinished. But before I get the last layer of clear coat on it, I tried a little trick, and I tried it first up here on the front of the gear. You can see the Flying Cowboys logo embedded on top of carbon clear. So the carbon fiber is black, but a high gloss black is more black, so I was able to ghost that in. And I thought, how can I say thank you to all the people in aviation that have meant something to me. So I started thinking about the different flying groups, the different magazines, the different individual people, the companies that have helped me and supported me on the last 14 aircraft I've built, and how do I put them on my plane? And the list I started to make got longer and longer and longer. And I, how in the world do you do that? And so I've come up with a plan, and I hope it works, because I'm really excited about it. So what I'm going to do is I put this list, and I'll give you an example. I started putting it on right here. Every one of these is just the start of different aviation companies that have helped me. And I'm going to put all those on. Then I'm going to put on aviation magazines that inspired me. And then I'm going to put on names of flying groups that I like online, and, and then names of people. And then I'm just going to list every name I can come up with and put it on a list and I'm gonna see how many I can fit on the plane. I won't fit everything, but I've printed hundreds. So let me show you what this looks like. Right here, you see this white, that's just a reverse stencil. What will happen is I'll pull off the covering, tape off everything out, and I'm going to paint high gloss black over top of all the names that I am gonna cover from this part of my plane back with hundreds of names in black. And then I'm gonna clear over it all. So you see almost all clear carbon fiber and ghosted into it is all the names of everything I love about aviation. But I'll talk about it. So here we got Flying Magazine, AOPA Pilot, Sport Aviation, Water Flying, Plane and Pilot. I got a group from overseas that did stories on Draco. Smithsonian, I skipped down aerospace, kit plane, Vertical Magazine, Flying Cowboys. Then I got flying groups. Look how cool this is. These are groups I just fly with currently, love to fly with, or can't wait to fly with. Like, I got, of course, my Flying Cowboys, Backcountry Bush Pilots, Stoll Drag, uh, 170 Mafia. That's a cool group of boys out of Alaska. I can't wait to go flying with those guys because I'm taking Scrappy to Alaska. 170 Mafia, I got Air Venture. Ohio Bush Pilots, Fat Tire Cowboys, great group of guys right there, love those guys. Uh, Reno Air Races, of course we love Reno. High Sierra Flying, Big Tire Pilots, Stole Rats, awesome guys. Group, a lot of them out of California, love to fly with these boys and uh, they're up from all over the place as well. But anyway, I'm sure I'm missing some of them. I got Bahama Bush Pilots, I got my Aussies in Australia and the Bush Flyers down under. And so I've got all these people and then the people in those groups that I love. I also have super excited about the online groups that I'm part of. Tail Dragger Pilots United and Big Tire Pilots and all these other flying groups. I can't list them all. I'm trying to. I'm missing a ton of you. I'm going to try and get everyone I can on the plane. 
I won't be able to fit everything because there's too much that I love about aviation. And it just couldn't fit on the back of this plane, but I'm gonna get all I can. And if I miss you, just know I love you. Everything about aviation, all of you people, everybody that puts time and effort into such a great family community that is aviation. This is my way of trying to tell you how much I love you and how much I appreciate general aviation and what it's done for me and my family and growing my family. So I hope the look of it turns out okay. And I kind of don't really care. I want it to look cool, but more importantly, I want these names on here to represent what Scrappy and flying is to me. I hope you guys like it. I'm gonna dole a pair of scissors, cutting all these out, sticking them on the plane. So I got a lot to do. You know the drill. Let's get back to work. I love you guys. Let's go flying soon. All right, <laughs> it's taken hours to get to this point, but I'm really excited because I just hit the halfway mark. This side's done. I'm gonna go over to the other side. Right here, I put me, my wife, my two daughters and my two boys right here on this. So I'll repeat them on the other side because I love my family. Anyway, and then the rest of my aviation family coming down here. And it, whether it looks like it or not, I'm not sure if you can tell, that's several hundred names. We're gonna do it again on that side, get the rest of the aviation family, at least everyone we can possibly fit in this lower section. And uh, halfway there, halfway to go. Let's get back to work. All right, it's the moment of truth. There's like 500 names on here. And I hope it works out because this was a huge job. And now that I've got it done and sprayed, I got to peel it all off. But the letters and all the way around each individual letter, and then especially inside of letters, like the letter B has a tiny, tiny circle. I got to pluck out each one. So there's like 500 names times however many letters, like 3,000 individual little pull-aparts uh, to get out of here. So I'm gonna be here. The sun's up, I got lots of time, but it's gonna be a long night. So cross our fingers, it works. Then we put clear coat on it. Should be really subtle, almost like you can't see it, but walk up, I hope it just comes alive and you can find your name on Scrappy. Love you guys. <laughs> Let's get to work. Uh, it's way too nice of a day to work in the shop. I got this old table. We'll uh, do this out here. But So I made these. And I've got a... I hollowed out the back side, so they're really, really lightweight. But I really hate when you have a firewall or a bulkhead fitting. You put it through a hole, and you can't get to both sides because you're working at 3 a.m. by yourself. <laughs> and, uh, but even if you have some help, when you try and put a hose on one end, the other side twists, and then all of a sudden the nut comes loose and the hose inside wants to move. It's just a pain. So I made these, I made them so tight, they actually don't fit in. If I've done it right, put this socket here this socket here press fit now that can't move can't twist once this gets screwed to the firewall bulkhead whatever pass through uh, I can still put the nut on the back side the hose can connect here but once this is bolted I can put a wrench on this side or this side and that head can never move and I can never get the other side to come undone. So that's my bulkhead lock. 
I don't know what else to call it. I think they should make these because I just started making them on this build and uh, I wish I had them on all my builds. So I'll make a bunch more. If anyone wants a little business idea and you want to go make these, <laughs> I'd buy them. <laughs> Let's get back to work. Well, this is the last time I need to just open up my gear to work on it. I'm running the brake line. I contemplated just attaching it along the bottom, but on the underside of a wing, but it just looked like crap. So I'm pulling it apart using my fittings, go up in here, run the line inside the wing, the brake line will attach like this, so it can pivot up and down without binding the brake line. The other brake line will come out this side, run around and come into the attachment here. So about another two hours, maybe, maybe three, we'll have this done, fill it with brake fluid, pump it up, test it, let's get back to work. Okay guys, we're getting close on these mini wings. I have a couple of things to button up. I'm gonna finish getting these brake lines in. I've got just a couple more holes left to drill for the weak points to make sure if there's any water gets inside these wings. It has a, several places to get out. Also the inspection points for annual inspections to keep an eye on the metal frame inside. That would just take a few minutes to button that up and we'll move on to the next project. Let's get back to work. Guys, we are getting close. This has got the second to the last coat of clear on it. So we've got to cut it down and uh, go right through where the letters and the different layers of paint are so we can get the feel out of it. You can barely feel right now the layers between. I could leave it, but I'm being a little picky, especially for a bush plane. We're going to go pound in the weeds. Um, but I'm really excited about it. So. We'll sand this all down. This one used to look as shiny as that, but this does have the clear on it, but now it's smooth between the colors. So we got to spray this again, then we'll cut and buff it. This one two more times, and then it's going on the plane and it's gonna stay on. So we got a lot of work to do. Let's get back at it. I'm doing now I've got all these crazy parts I've got I don't know 15 or 20 of them on already so you can come on I got my interior panels my parachute box my rear bagging bulkhead we got some of this uh, area that's covering all my cables uh, I'm gonna put this in finish the back um, these side panels I'll have all the interior in and maybe 30 40 more minutes at least that Come look underneath here. I'm pretty excited about this. Underneath this, this is in the belly pod. It's a little dusty, I gotta clean it. But all my cables are buried, my air vent lines for the AC in the back, the heat in the back, um, all the wiring's covered. There's no place exposed. So when this side, the carbon fiber goes around this, I've got two doors here, this little belly pod luggage area and nothing is exposed, not a single control, wire, oil line. There's nothing that can get hit by any luggage. So I'm gonna finish putting these on. Let's get back to work. All right, it's late. I'm gonna call it a night. I got paint drying in the booth over there. I'm really excited about that. And uh, so I've been working on wiring, putting all the interior panels on. I left the film on the window here so I can peel it off layer to protect it. But if you cruise down, I've got everything done. Fuel tank in, antennas done, all the antennas routed in step length for where they go into the top. 
fuel probes hooked up, vent lines hooked up. Of course, my big king shock. So I've got a little bit of wiring cleanup to do, but for all intents and purposes, there's my ELT antenna ready to go in. Um, I have one last wire to hook up back here, and that's, I just need the connector to go from here to my ELT, but the ELT is mounted, fuel pumps are wired. So parachute box is ready to go. There's a train wreck in here. <laughs> Ignore behind the curtain. Oh. <laughs> so right now I've got it all cleaned and zipped all the way up. I've got clean up, some isolators. I got a lot of grip lock ties I still got to put on, which is rubber line zip ties. If you haven't seen them, check them out. They're awesome. Uh, but I got to do a lot of work behind the panel. But at least everything now is up to the front. And I've even bled and pumped up the brakes. I'm waiting for a custom reservoir to come. So this is my reservoir. You can see it move as I pump my brakes. <laughs> but I actually have brakes and the bleed out, bleed went perfect. No leaks, everything went great. All the lines are in. So I'm really excited. Firewall here is about ready for the firewall blanket. Got everything done. All eight motor mounts ready to go to carry the motor out. So it's a dirty mess. I'm super excited. It's late. I'm going to get some sleep. Come back and join me next time. I hope you like my videos. If you do, subscribe, ring the bell, come back and see me. We'll talk to you later. Good night.